Now it's working, perfect. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I want to congratulate all of you. To start with, you're, you're all winners, all of you. Already being here is fantastic. And we saw uh, in the quarterfinals a fantastic level from everybody, very nice. Thank you, Asia is really growing, Oceania is growing, it's fantastic. Also the, the CMI finalist was uh, impressive, impressive work done. 
in the two ateliers. It's, uh, really, the jury is very impressed. I'm happy being present. I'm very happy. Yeah, you know, really. But I'm not going to let you wait too long. I have the three names here. Uh, I received it from uh, Psycho, who's uh, in charge of all the pointing of the points. I want also to thank the jury for tremendous work to uh, to put this this competition together. I think you should congratulate them too. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Nice. So the first finalist, in whatever order, from Singapore, Mason. Yes. <laughs> the second finalist from New Zealand, Andrea. And the third finalist, I won't let him wait anymore, from Australia, Loic. Congratulations. Okay, um, I invite you guys to come with Olivier, please. Pull a number. Can you, two? Can you show the numbers this way also? Thank you. One, three. Thank you very much. You can watch the finals. We're going to put some more shares. We're going to take these things away and then just take place, you know, and support uh, your colleagues. Okay. Thank you very much, anyway. Thank you.
candidate, Mason from Singapore. Please come here on stage. How are you doing? Good. Fine? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Thank you. Ready for the first task? Yes. Good. It will be at this table. Okay. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernod Vergelès Premier Cru Ile de Vergelès. Please aerate this wine and serve it to us. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes. Shall I repeat? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernod Vergelès Premier Cru Ile de Vergelès. Please aerate this wine and serve it to us. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes, and time is running now. Hello, very good afternoon, uh, going to evening. Can I just check uh, who's the host today? And they ordered a bottle of the uh, Premier Cru Vergelès. Can I quickly check um, two guests would like to have the wine directly from the bottle? Gonna check for yourself. Both ladies, yeah, perfect. I'll get the wine prepared for you now. Thank you. So we can I quickly check if you're the vintage you have ordered is the 2012, 15, or the 18? Um. Ryan recommended this in 2015 for you from Mason Champy uh, with Bonne Vergelès Premier Cru. Yeah, so that is decanted for you. No. I'm sorry, but it's not the correct wine. Not the correct wine? Have it changed for you? Um, would it be the 12 or the 18, sir? I just want the correct one. <laughs> Please, sir. The 2012 Premier Cube, Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So sorry about that. We got this quickly served to you. Just a quick introduction for the wine for you today. Um, so it's having the Pernod Vergelès comes from the region of Burgundy, it's Pinot Noir, and it's um, coming from the Côte de Bonne, the southern part of the Côte d'Or. Uh, Ile Vergelès actually is the one of the premier cru which under Laval classification under 1855 was actually supposed to be um, classified as one of the Grand Cru's, um, but due to political reasons, the wine was actually not classified under Grand Cru. So you have a very high quality wine over here. 2012. The vintage itself, it's a very um, sort of cool vintage. So you have nice acidity over here, there's good freshness, but at the same time, it's not overly cold. So you have good ripeness of the fruit level here. Thoughts? 
seems to be fine. Want to quick check if it's possible for me to taste the wine? Thank you. Excellent condition on the nose. Perfect. So you taste the wine, sir. I recently visited Burgundy. Right. In Burgundy, it's not recommend to the irate or decanter the wines. What do you think? For me personally, I would also agree with that. I find the wine very delicate, but of course, I think the guest preferences of most importance. And if you prefer to have the wine decanter, we have chosen something which is on a smaller decanting, uh, smaller um, decanter, uh, so it doesn't have too much air. It doesn't sort of uh, spoil the wine too much, or it doesn't allow the wine to be over aerated or lose the subtle flavors. So for this one, we've chosen a slightly smaller decanter um, because it still wouldn't over oxidate the wine. So the main idea of decantation is to separate the sediments from the wine um, and of course to soften the tannins. But over here, you have a wine which is not so much required to have the tannins softened down. It's already very delicate. Um, so in this case, we're decanting the wine mainly in terms of opening up the wine a bit more and separating it from the sediments. Time. Thank you very much. First task fulfilled. Now we come to the second task. Please make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. Shall I repeat? Uh, the, the time? Three minutes. Three minutes. So make a full organic tasting of the wine in three minutes. Okay, time starts. So the first wine over here, the wine seems to be a white wine, uh, but just a quick check. Wine number one is a white wine. Wine is clear, uh, no evidence of gas, no evidence of sediment. It was a day bright, sorry, star bright, very bright over here with a light goldish hue in, in the center moving towards a silverish rim on the outside. Um, we have a concentration of medium. There seems to be tones of uh, darkness over here, which could indicate uh, age or oak barrel aging. Viscosity is at medium. Moving on to the nose. The wine is clean. The wine seems to have notes of age um, developing. There's notes of development over here. Uh, and there is a medium, mo moderate to moderate uh, elevated intensity of the wine, but not to the extent of high yet. Uh, it, there is notes of uh, wine, uh, sorry, notes of aromaticness which inside which could suggest the aromatic grape variety, but not overly aromatic. There's notes of uh, yellow pears, yellow apples, a bit of oxidized booze kind of style to the uh, food characters over here, a bit of baked uh, sensation as well, and a lot of yellow flowers, area of yellow flowers like chamomile, uh, and even a bit of white flowers as well, dandelions. There is high amount of minerality in this wine, uh, and there is hints of uh, buttery, uh, nutty notes like hazelnuts, uh, but not toasted, uh, fresh hazelnuts, uh, fresh almonds as well, which could suggest that wine is aged in old oak barrels, not overly oaked, don't, don't, don't get too much of vanillas or uh, cinnamon. Moving on to the palate. The wine is clean, the wine is dry, Medium plus acid, sorry, moderate to elevated acidity. Alcohol is at uh, moderate levels. The wine is a medium bodied, long finish. The wine is complex and quite balanced as well. The wine over here, 
once again, has a lot of notes of baked food characteristics, but not overly ripe, just um, more like yellow pears and yellow apples predominant in the flavors, and notes of yellow flowers once again, mainly on chamomile uh, on the palate. Notes of nuttiness remains on the palate, which once again suggests that the wine would be aged in oak barrels. Strong amount of minerality over here as well. My initial, sorry, my conclusion is that the wine is from an old world, sorry, from France, from a moderate, uh, sorry, cool climate due to the acidity and the alcohol is not being overly high. Um, coming, going from the region of Savoie, uh, great variety is a Rousset, a Rousset de Savoie, AOC, and vintage is a 2019. Due to the amount of chamomile over here, I will serve this in a nice uh, white wine glass for a chilled around 8 to 10 degrees Celsius, and we will serve a pairing of uh, perhaps some fish with... Um, Dave. Thank you so much. Relax. Everything is going well. Now, the next task is just waiting. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. You have four minutes for that. And I repeat the question. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. Ready to go? Yes. Please, start. The second one um, would be lager, lager beer, um, mainly from hops, um, and comes from the region, country of Australia. Third one is a it's a dunkel, uh, it's a stout. Um, there's hints of bitterness over here. Stout, dark stout, um, coming from the region of Germany. It's not as strong as Belgian, and the alcohol is not as elevated as Belgian. The fourth one I'll go for Indian Pale Ale, coming from the US. There's bitterness inside and notes of mangoes, pineapples, relatively strong. Sorry, number four I call stout. Number three is the number three is the ale. Number three is Indian Pale Ale. I swapped number three and four the answers. Number four is a stout coming from uh, Germany, Dunkel, number three is Indian Pale from the US, number two is a lager, and the first one is a ghost beer with uh, ghost beer from, made out of a, uh, mixtures of herbs, and there's a salt, there's, a, there's saltiness inside, there's coriander as well, there's, there's good acidity over here, so this is ghost beer coming from the region. Uh, of Sweden, so it goes here, lager. Lager from Japan, sorry, not Australia. There's a smoothness of the palate over here, it's not overly strong, stout from I changed the stout to Guinness from uh, Ireland instead. Black stout. Um,
And we'll serve these all at uh, five to eight degrees Celsius, very chilled. Um, I'll serve the first one in a nice uh, burgundy glass because there's nice acidity to it. It feels very much like a wine kind of style. And we have this served with a bit of uh, uh, coriander salad and some chicken, which is very uh, famous in Isakaya, with some sesame oil as well. Second one lager, we'll serve it in a nice highball glass because it's nice, fresh. We like it very chilled, five to eight degrees Celsius as well. And we'll serve it with some nice uh, buttered uh, pancit fish. I think it's nice acidity, uh, sorry, as the lightness to it, and it can make the fish a bit more uh, easier going. The third one is the ale, it's quite strong. It was served this in a nice burgundy glass as well, a balloon shaped, and so slightly warmer around uh, 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. There's a lot of intensity of flavors over here, and we served it uh, with a grilled chicken uh, with some uh, Bernay sauce on the side because there's good intensity. And the last one is the stout we'll be serving uh, with four minutes. Mason, thank you very much. That's all. We're not finished yet. You were so fast, you will love the next question. Please suggest a four-course meal to go with these beers. <laughs> Isn't it great? great four comments. minutes for it. Okay. I repeat once again. Please suggest a four-course meal to go with these four beers. And you have four minutes time and ready to go. Okay, first one we'll go once again. This is uh, with the first one beer. We'll be serving a nice burgundy glass for you. Around uh, five to eight degrees Celsius, nice and chilled. I will have a coriander salad with some uh, shredded chicken and topped with some sesame oil as well. Uh, the good acidity can cut through the oil over there. And uh, the, once again, because it's a ghost beer, it's made out of uh, herbs, uh, it can actually complement quite well with it, and the chicken is not overly flavorful. So over here, we serve eight, uh, five to eight degrees Celsius, burgundy glass. Um, the second one we'll be serving, um, this is the ale. No, the lager, sorry, the lager. So the lager, we'll be serving it uh, with a fish, uh, but this time we'll be using a pan-seared uh, sea bass, uh, and then we uh, have it served with a little bit of butter sauce inside, so it's a bit more richer uh, style, but not overly powerful. Um, so we serve it very chilled, uh, five to eight degrees Celsius as well, uh, because there's hints of the bitterness inside, which I don't want it to overpower uh, the entire fish flavor profile. Uh, we serve it in a nice uh, Riesling glass, actually, for this one, um, and serve it very chilled. Um, the flavors over here are light, but still there's nice richness to it, but not overly powerful. So it can go quite well with the fish and it won't overpower either of the uh, components within the entire dish. The third one, this is the, the ale. So this one will serve it in a burgundy glass once again, between a temperature of eight to 10 degrees Celsius. I think there's a lot more flavor profile over here coming from the ale, there's a lot of intensity. I would like it served slightly warmer in a nice balloon glass to sort of accentuate the flavors over here. Um, and for this, we'll be serving with a um, chicken, a grilled chicken, uh, grilled over Japanese bean chotan. So there's nice flower tones to it, with a bit of that uh, char as well, and we serve with Bernay sauce on the side, which adds a bit of layer uh, and, and creaminess to it. And um, yes, and the fourth one, the stout. We'll be serving this stout uh, in a uh, Bordeaux or Bordeaux, sort of Belgian kind of glass, uh, slightly wide, and on the top, it's slightly uh, curved in. Um, so we serve this around. 10, 8 to 10 degrees Celsius as well, slightly warm, so we're moving down the segment, and we'll serve this with a uh, braised uh, army beef, A5 army beef, uh, in a stout sauce. So we cook the stout, we reduce it, and so there's a nice intensity of it. We serve it on top with some grilled uh, asparagus on the side, um, and the stout, is, the stout sauce would have a combination of some red wine as well to add a bit of the acidity inside, to just cut through. Uh, the kind of fat that the army beef has. So we'll serve this around eight to 10 in a nice uh, wide glass once again. And for uh, dessert, after all this, uh, we'll be recommending some digestive as well. Um, for the digestive, we'll be recommending uh, something which is not from here, all of them, would be a cognac, because you have almost a lot of countries over here with cognac coming from France. Uh, we'll serve it in a nice balloon glass between the temperatures of 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we'll let you warm it up in your, in your hands uh, as we suggest to have it. And we'll serve some uh, French cannelé as well coming from the region of Bordeaux uh, as uh, some uh, miniadies at the end of it. To start you off, um, we'll be having uh, some, I'll recommend some aperitif to go with it. And the chef has prepared some uh, amuse bouche as well. Um, the aperitif we recommend is a Austrian a sparkling wine by Schlumberger uh, coming from uh, Austria. And the grape variety over here is Riesling, so it's nice fresh acidity. Uh, so you have some wine, some mm -hmm. beer, and some cognac all around the world. We have Austria, uh, France, uh, we have uh, Ireland, um, Japan, Sweden, and 
Ale was from one of the countries which was not here. Uh, and for that, we were, we were small snack with the sparkling, uh, and we'd serve a nice uh, a ham, a cured ham, and on top, we would just add a bit of a Japanese uh, egg yolk uh, on a spoon, served on a spoon with some uh, caviar on top. Nice. Thank, thank you. So, thank you very much, Mason. Just get some fresh air. Okay. Perfect. The next question is a very easy one. Okay. On the screen is a short list, a short wine list of some iconic wines. You will also get a list to read on the paper, so it's easy for you. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some errors that need correcting. Please identify and correct the errors. For this task, you will have two minutes. Afterwards, when you're finished after two minutes, I will ask you a question. And for these questions, you have to answer very fast. You have a maximum of 30 seconds. I repeat. Okay. Sorry. I repeat. On the screen is a short wine list of some iconic wines. But unfortunately, there are some errors that need correcting. Please identify and correct the errors. You will have two minutes time. After these two minutes, I will ask you a question. This question asks for an immediate answer and you have maximum 30 seconds to answer. Understood? So I hand you out the list, time is running, and for everybody it's on the screen. Um, the second one, Maison Pierre Evenoir from Avoir Clan, this is a uh, Savagnan, coming from Jura, from France, it's not Savignon. Giovanni Bianco by Boncampagni, Ludo, this he should not be Semyon, coming from the region of Lazio. Um, should be Fulano. Focca Fulano. Jackie Trucho, Moise and Danny Primacru, Close Tolon. Rene and Giorgone Chiso that stopped production in 2005. It should not be 2005. It does not exist afterwards. It's now not the domain, uh, uh, Domaine Dogene. Uh, 1999, Henri Jaillet, New Saint Georges, there's no Vaucan. Vaucan is not within, so it's within New Saint Georges. Uh, I don't think they produce New Saint Georges. Uh, Vaucan, they do others, but not Vaucan. And it's not until 19, uh, 1999 exists, yes. But not Vaucan, it doesn't exist. Pure Cru Vaucan by Henri Jaillet. Latour Aubryon stopped, in, stopped production in 2005, so this does not exist anymore. 2006, Chateau Magdalene, uh, it's not from Margot, it's from saint emilion Jantas de Vaux, Cuvée Reserve, Côte Blanche, from Côte Rotti. This looks all right. Noël Verset, Cronas does not produce Reynard, it's only just Cronas. Um, no Reynard. Um, Claude Joliet, it's not from Jonson. It's from Provence. Jackie Trucheau. I know they stop production, but uh, he keeps only one. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Now the question. Just for a fast answer. There is a special common denominator of these wines. What is it? There is a? Sorry. There is a special common denominator of these wines. What is it? They, 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 they are not produced on those years anymore. Um, no, wait. Uh. They are all iconic wines from their respective regions. Time. Yeah. So, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, well. We continue with some identifications. So we'll get more glasses now. 
I can tell you with this task, you're halfway through. <laughs> okay. Okay. Please, identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. I repeat the question. Please, identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. You have five minutes for this task. Five minutes. Ready to go? Time is going. Sort of four of them are sweet wines. I'll start to, uh, from the driest to the sweetest would be number two, number four, number three, and number one, from sweetest to driest. Number four, I'll start with the assessment. This is a um, Moscatel grape coming from the region of Spain. Um, so it comes from the region of uh, Jerez area. It's a Moscatel, slightly sweet, uh, in the vintage of 2019. Nice young fresh from Spain. The first one, uh, sorry, number two is number two is also from Spain, and this is a sherry. This is an Amontillado, Amontillado style sherry. Goes through uh, Fino, and then afterwards. Uh, starts with Fino and ages off to Amontillado. A uh, good producer, uh, producers like uh, Gonzalez Bias, um, and this is non-vintage uh, grapes. We have Palomino Fino over here uh, from the region of Jerez. Once again, Spain, Jerez, Amontillado, Sherry, non-vintage. The third one. I'm going to identify this as Australian. I get notes of eucalyptus over here. I'm going to start uh, to think the wine is from Wurtegland. It's a Muscat, a Wurtegland Muscat. Um, uh, around 15 years, 15 years Wurtegland Muscat coming from Australia. Uh, grape variety is Muscat and vintage of, uh, non vintage, so it's a blend. Um, 15 years aged. And the last one is. I'm going to call this sherry once again. This is sherry coming from Montilla Morias of Jerez from Spain. Uh, grape variety is Pedro Jimenez um, and non vintage. And for all of these, I'll be serving in a nice white wine glass. And we'll serve this recommended to go with, uh, sorry, the third one I recommend to go with some pancit, four grapes, some sesame on top, um, and some uh, uh, cherry chutney on the side as well to elevate a bit of acidity. Temperature will serve at eight, five to eight degrees Celsius cooler. The second one will be serving with some uh, grilled white asparagus and some hollandaise sauce on the side, uh, grilled, uh, blanched and grilled uh, on top of uh, charcoal to add a bit of that smokiness of flavors inside, uh, blend very nicely with uh, the sauce itself as well, it adds on a bit of texture. And for this, we'll be serving in a five, uh, sorry, eight to 10 degrees Celsius, slightly warmer than the first one. Um, 
and in a nice wine glass over here as well. And the fourth one will be serving this with a nice pear sorbet dessert, uh, simple with a bit of mint on top. And we're going to add, um, for this one, we'll, we'll do uh, five to eight degrees Celsius, very chilled in a nice wine glass over here as well. And the first one uh, we'll be serving uh, with a nice uh, vanilla ice cream uh, for dessert, uh, vanilla ice cream, uh, and we'll drizzle some uh, Pedro Jimenez uh, on top of the ice cream as well and shave some uh, dark Varona chocolate uh, over the top just to add a bit more on the chocolate flavor profile to it. Uh, we'll serve this very chilled five to eight degrees Celsius once again in a small white wine glass as here. Time. Thank you very much. Now we have to walk a little bit. Okay. Please come over here behind the bar for the next task. Behind the bar, sorry. Here would be the ideal place. Ready? With these bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, and Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktail. You do not need to make the cocktails. You have three minutes time. Okay, so that's one more time. Thank you. Okay. With these bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, and Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktail. You do not need to make the cocktails, and you have three minutes' time, and the three minutes start now. Right on, on the
one, two, three, four. Okay. And one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, Time. Thank you very much. Please come with me. If you stand here, you have probably the best view because you need to look at the screen. On the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label, but only a small part of it. Can you identify the producer and the wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo. Repeat. On the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label, but only a small part, small part of it. Can you identify the producer and the wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo. Okay. Time starts now, or the photo starts. This is um, Clarendon Hill. This is uh, Australis from McLaren Vale. Clarendon Hill, Australis. This is Alma Viva by Concha Itoa and uh, Bon Philippe de Rochelle from Chile, from Cachagua. This is This is Chateau Rayas, or it could be um, one of the Reynaud estate, uh, from Chateau to Pape from France. Uh, Chateau Rayas, Chateau to Pape from France. This is uh, La Conscience from Pomeo, uh, from France, from Bordeaux. Echo Vineyard. This is a Japanese wine. And that is a mountain. This is Maceto from Tuscany. Uh, this was owned by Onelaya. Now it's owned by the Fresco Baldi family. Thank you very much. You. If you want to leave the stage, oh, okay. and we continue with the next candidate. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot.
Welcome candidate number two, Andrea from New Zealand. Thank you. <clears throat> no. Come up here, please. Hello, Thank Andrea. You. How Hello. are you doing? I'm great. Everything fine? You're great? Yes. You're ready to go? Perfect. Very ready. Let's start. Start at this table with the yes. first task. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernod Vergeles Premier Cru Les Fichons. Please aerate this wine and serve it to the table. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes. Shall I repeat? Please. Okay. Sorry. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernod Vergeles Premier Cru Les Fichons. Please aerate this wine and serve it to us. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes. Thank you. And time is running now. Fantastic. Please. Good afternoon and welcome. Um, so my colleague said that you ordered uh, a bottle of wine. Who's the, um, who's the host? Great. And also you mentioned that two of you would like to have it straight, straight from the bottle. The ladies. The ladies. Okay, fantastic. I'll get your wine and organize for you straight away. And by the way, my name is Andrea. I'll be looking after you tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the 2015 uh, Lefi Show from uh, Maison Champion. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm still using the cradle because uh, I know that even if I'm going to have to serve for you uh, from the bottle, still there might be a little bit of risk of sediment, so I'll try, um, prefer not to shake it too much, or as little as possible at least. Yes, good conditions. May I give you a taste first, sir? Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. Fantastic. I recently visited Burgundy. In Burgundy, it is not recommended to decant or I rate red wines. What do you think? Yes, I am I'm aware of um, the general opinion, but I still think that a red wine of, uh, especially of this caliber and with a bit of age, like this always will benefit of a bit of, uh, bit of variation. Especially the aeration, but also, you know, never know, still might throw a little bit of sediment. Sorry, you have a shaky hand. Did they realize how strong coffee in Japan is? I think uh, too much. May I leave? I'm going to be able to give now. Okay. Thank you. So there is no sediment in the wine, but still. Good to get a little bit of variation. Okay, and you already have uh, something planned for food for this wine? No? Great. Well, in that case, if. Uh, yes? Okay, great. In that case, if you don't mind, I would like to serve a roasted um, pork loin. Roasted pork loin uh, served with some. Uh, a sour cherry sauce. I leave the, the Thank graph you. here. Thank you very much, Andrea. Please come over here. Good. First <sighs> task accomplished. Thank you. Second task vacant for you. It's only nine tasks a day, so you can. Oh, okay, easy. <laughs> Please make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. You have three minutes. I repeat? Okay. Yes, can I have a glass of water? Yeah, please take Sorry. a glass of water. And once again, please make a full organoleptic tasting of the wine. You have three minutes, and okay. time starts now. So, wine number one is a white wine, which is clear, brilliant, with a golden yellow core, uh, quite consistent to the rim, a moderate intensity of color, um, pronounced in. Um, <clears throat> viscosity, and there is no evidence of sediment or gas. The nose of the wine is clean, pronounced, and developing. Primary fruit aromas of the wine are towards the citrus fruits and stone fruits, some pomaceous fruit as well. There is some candied uh, lemon peel, some uh, yellow apple, some pear, some uh, apricot. There is some um, bit of honeysuckle, um, some floral character. Uh, there is a bit of beeswax. It's some uh, fresh nutty character, some uh, hazelnut, and, and some um, almond they suggest some uh, evolution, but there's no e evidence of oak. And the palate one is dry, full bodied, clean, still developing. Palate confirms the nose with the note of uh, <coughs> ripe fruits, but also the floral character, the honeysuckle, the um, beeswax. There's a bit of um, evolution, the wine is dry, it's got a really pronounced, very refreshing acidity. The wine also has uh, <clears throat> a moderate alcohol level of about uh, 13%. The wine overall is of very good complexity, very long finish, and of very good quality. So I would say this wine is um, a wine made, there's a, there's also a beautiful minerality both on the palate and the nose, again, no signs of oak, if there's oak, probably in large barrels. So this is a wine I think from the old world, from uh, it's a, I believe a bit of Butrytis, so I would say it's a um, it's a Riesling from um, uh, from the Wachau, from uh, it's a Schmaragd Riesling from a grape producer like FX Pichler, um single vineyard, 2015 vintage. It's a wine that would serve at um, 12 degrees of temperature in, in a small uh, or medium-sized Revel Up uh, Chef Sommelier glass. I would serve this wine straight off the, the bottle. There's no need of decantation. Uh, the wine is definitely great to drink now. Could keep it in the bottle for another five years. It's a wine that I would love to serve with 
a beautiful Hokkaido scallop served with some, um, a bit of um, a grilled Hokkaido scallop with some uh, passion fruit and, uh, and honey because of the uh, um, passion fruit, the fruity character and the honey notes on the, and the dish will go really, really well with the um, honey notes and the, and the beautiful richness of the wine. Also the wine on the nose. The palate also shows some nut signs of, um, of evolution and age, a little bit of fresh nuts. Um, and, and again, there's no evidence of oak on the palate. If there is oak, perhaps larger barrels or neutral, neutral oak. Time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we get more beverages served? Oh, fantastic. And I give you the task in a moment as soon as the glasses are put. Great, thank you very much. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. You have four minutes for this task. Four repeat? minutes. Okay. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. You have four minutes. Time starts now. Thank you. Beer number one is a Lambic beer from Belgium, <clears throat> from uh, producer like Lindemann's, so um, aged um, traditional Lambic. Or produce. And number two is a Lager from, um, <clears throat> from Holland, um, top fermented beer from, uh, from Holland Lager. Number three. Number three <clears throat> is a saison beer from, uh, from also from Belgium producer like La Chouffe. Number four is a porter. Porter beer from, from the UK, um, United Kingdom. Um, So the number three, I will change my mind, is a Trappist, Trappist beer from, from Belgium, uh, Chimé. You have 40, se 40 yes. seconds more. 40 seconds more.
Okay. Sorry, made a mess. If you finish, that's fine, Andrea. You are fast. We stay at the same place for the next um, task. Please suggest a four-course meal to go with these beers. You have four minutes for that. So again, please suggest a four-course meal to go with the beers. You have four minutes for that. Time starts now. Great, fantastic. So uh, these beers, they're already in a very good um, order in terms of, uh, I wouldn't change the order of the beers. Uh, with number one, it's a lambic beer, so it's got a beautiful acidity, and kind of very fresh, so it would be really good to have um, a, a, something like an aperitif. Uh, perhaps I was thinking something like a, a kingfish carpaccio with a little bit of, um, of um, um, a bit of, um, sorry, yuzu and, and pistachio, uh, this uh, kind of nutty character, um, perhaps um, on top of a, a little um, blini because of the um, kind of bready character on the yeasty notes of the blini would go really well with the yeasty character of the, of the wine, uh, of the beer, but at the same time, the citrusy notes would mirror very well the citrusy character of uh, beer number one. For number two, uh, I would, uh, would love to, to serve also something seafood based, uh, perhaps a little startup, something very delicate, a, a, um, a papillot of, of river, river um, trout, uh, papillot river trout with some, uh, some citrus, uh, some, some uh, uh, orange and, and uh, wild fennel, so these kind of herbal notes and and the citrusy character and the delicate meat of the, um, of the trout will go really, really well with the delicate elements of number two, of beer number two for the lager. For number three, instead, something a little bit more structured and a main course, I would love to serve a, um, a perhaps, um, why not a little bit of, a little bit of pasta uh, because of the yeasty character and the bready notes of the beer really go very well with the pasta. The pasta that would serve it would be with, um, with the traditional ragu, uh, traditional uh, bolognese, why not? Because the wine has got a kind of a rich savory character. It would go really, really well with the richness of the ragu. And number four, uh, of course, a, a chocolate dessert, a, a dark chocolate, um, perhaps a sake, sake torte, sake torte with a beautiful ganache, a bit of jam in the middle, the, the, um, or perhaps instead of the jam, a coffee, coffee liqueur, sorry, a coffee, um, coffee cream in the middle, because the uh, coffee character of the beer will complement really, really well with the sake torte, with the chocolate the richness of the sake torte, but at the same time, this mocha coffee uh, character of the center. An alternative to, to number three, if you, if you perhaps, uh, if you prefer, like pasta, or we could organize perhaps, um, so it's the, the, the beer does have that very faint sort of smoky uh, undertone, probably in, we're in Japan, so selection of yakitori, maybe, uh, chicken uh, yakitori, that would be really, really good. Um, the, you know, the chicken is still a kind of delicate meat, um, so the, the beer is not too rich, still gonna, work very, very well, but the bubbles and the freshness and the cooler temperature of the beer would help to balance all the palate from the, uh, from the heat and the smokiness of the, of the yakitori. An alternative, or perhaps of, uh, of number four, we could do something a, a little bit different. Um, we make here a something a um, little tartlet, which is uh, made with, with chocolate and, uh, and porcini, and caramelized porcini mushrooms. Uh, so porcini mushrooms, they do have this beautiful caramelized um, kind of toffee character, a bit of uh, earthiness, obviously, and together with the bitter chocolate, uh, and the tartlet would definitely be a great match for this beer. This I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's going well? Yeah. Great. Perfect. Next task. On the screen is a short list of iconic... Uh, sorry, I should start again. On the screen is a short wine list of some iconic wines. But unfortunately, there are some errors and that need, they need to be corrected. Please identify and correct the errors. You have two minutes for that task. 
After finishing this task, I will ask you a question which has to be answered immediately. So very fast, you have a maximum of 30 seconds afterwards for this special question. Shall I repeat? Um, yes, please. Mm -hmm. On the screen is a short wine list of some iconic wines, yep. but unfortunately, there are some errors that need correcting. Please identify and correct the errors. You will have two minutes. Afterwards, I will pose you a uh, question, ask you a question, which you have to answer immediately. You have maximum 30 seconds for answering the question, but for now, it's the wine list. I hand it over to you, oh, great. and great. you can start now. Thank you. Um, so number two, um, the Arbois Popolin is Sauvignon, no Sauvignon. I believe Latour Aubryon is uh, stopped producing in 2005, if I'm not mistaken. So this 2006 is not produced. And I believe René Angel doesn't produce a Grande Chiso. I'll have to double check. Time. Thanks a lot. Yep. Now, the next task. You bring some glasses. The, the question. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. There is a special yes. common denominator of these wines. What is it? There is a special common denominator of these wines. What is it? Want to have a look at the list here? Oh, can I? <laughs> now need an answer. Time. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. And now come the glasses. Oh, great. Okay, ready? Yeah, ready? Please identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. You have five minutes for that. I repeat, please identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. You have five minutes. Time starts now. Thank you.
Okay, so one number one is um, number one. <coughs> it's um, um, Pedro Jimenez Cherry from Spain, from Andalusia, uh, producer Les Gonzalez Beas or Alvear. Number two um, is from is uh, Boal from Madeira. Um, Boal, which is um, from Barbeito. Madeira, Portugal. Number three, uh, it's a, a brown muscat from uh, from uh, Rutherglen, Australia, from a producer like um, uh, All Saints. A classic muscat. Number four. It's a mistel, <coughs> um, perhaps a Jerry Pico from, um, uh, from South Africa, from a um, um, producer like Ken Forrester. So in order of sweetness, I would say the Boal is the driest. Then the Jerry Pico. So we'd say, sorry. Uh, number two, the driest. Number four, second. Then number three and number one. Driest to sweetest. And from sweetest to driest, number one, number two, number four. Uh, no, uh, sorry. Number one, number three, number two, number four. So the driest is number two, the boil. There comes number four. And then the muscat number three and number one, the sweetest. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go over there. Behind the bar. I guess. Just stand behind the bar, please. No. With these th uh, bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, and Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktails. You do not need to make the cocktails, and you have three minutes. Okay. And I repeat. Please. Sorry. With these bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktail. You do not need to make the cocktails, and you have three minutes' time. The time is running now. Great, fantastic, thank you. So for the Vesper, we start, uh, obviously, with the uh, vodka, gin, very classic, uh, Lillet. Um, Sazerac with the uh, absinthe, um, rye whiskey, and short pizzas and sugar syrup but that we'll take that later uh, Manhattan um, uh, 
Ah, Rust Nail. Yep, Rust Nail. We have uh, Shivas and Rambui. So write, write it here. Yeah. So write you it can here. write it down here. Yep. Names. Zarat, Vesper, and Rusty Nail. So the Sazerac, I would serve uh, in the little class. Vesper, Martini, and Rusty Nail also. Little class. Please, uh, on the side. I think um, I think I have it here. So Vesper just missing the garnish and the, uh, but this gin, vodka, lilet, sazerac, um, absinthe, rye and peshot bitters in a small glass and rusty nail just uh, rambouillet and scotch. Written down. You you have forty second more. Okay, great. Well, um, so great, fantastic. Well, these are some beautiful cocktails. If you like, I can I can arrange them for you. Um, you know, definitely gonna have one of them myself later for sure. <laughs> so so um, Vesper Vesper very famous uh, very famous cocktail um, that has to be shaken. Not stirred, as James Bond said. So you don't want to upset James Bond, so we to make it as he, as, as he says. And this uh, Sazerac, very old style, very old school cocktail. Um, it's a, not seen much in the bars at the moment, but I think it's a beautiful cocktail, uh, which is um, can be substituted. Um, actually, Thank rye can be substituted. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Please follow me. I'd like, like to stand here and look at the screen. On the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label, but only a small part of it. Can you identify the producer and wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo. So once again, on the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label, but only a small part of it. Can you identify the producer and wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo. Thank you. You're welcome. You can start. Um, McLaren Vale, Astralis, McLaren on Hill. Uh, Alma Viva. Uh, Conchetoro and, and um, yeah, from, from Chile, Almaviva, uh, Conchetoro and okay. Thunder Orchild. Uh, this is Barolo, uh, um, Mascarello, Barolo. Um, uh, Armand Rousseau, Armand Rousseau, Claude de la Roche. Bilancia da Collina from Oxbay, New Zealand. Mm. Beautiful day. Masseto um, from, from Tuscany. Uh, 
Italy Masetto, Merlo, Trinita Lord Nelaya. Great. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Finish. You may go down. And Thank you. Be great for candidate number three. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, shit.
So please welcome candidate number three, Loic from Australia. Loic, please come here. Good evening. How are you doing? I am fine. Divine. Wonderful. That's great. So let's make a divine task at this table. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernon Vercheles Premier Cru Le Vercheles. Please aerate this wine and serve it to us. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes. Can you repeat the question for me? Sure. Thank you. A pleasure. The clients have chosen a Maison Champy Pernon Vercheles Premier Cru Le Vercheles. Please aerate this wine and serve it to us. Two guests want this wine served directly from the bottle. For this task, you have six minutes, and the six minutes start now. With the host, can I ask you? Yes, and the person having the wine directly from the bottle? The ladies. Ladies, excellent, fantastic. Welcome to our restaurant. My name is Loic, I will be your sommelier. You have ordered a beautiful bottle of wine, and I will be serving to you very shortly, sir. So Maison Champy, Pernon Vergelès in Burgundy, Premier Cru, Les Vergelès, 2018. Thank you, sir. This is a young wines. Maison Champy is a great opportunity to taste Burgundy Pinot Noir from Premier Cru in the Côte des Beaune. Uh, Pinot Noir 100%. Great Premier Cru. It's your first time with us, I believe, yes? Madame? Thank you. Shall I serve you more water, are you friend at this stage? Please, thank you, sir. So I will first serve it for the ladies, so I will aerate it a bit later. First serve it nicely. Obviously, can I, may, I ask you if I may try the wines beforehand, just to make sure the wine is in top quality. Excellent. Very good. Thank you very much. May I try? Right. Lovely red fruit. Ladies, shall we? I'll, I'll give a taste for you, sir, first. Pernod Vergelès 2018, we serve it to start with a beautiful uh, bluefin tuna, uh, tataki style. Sorry, I, I recently visited Burgundy, and in Burgundy it's not recommended to decant or, or aerate these wines. What do you think? I think uh, being as a 2018, just a little bit of aeration prior, just going to benefit a little bit of oxygen. So yes, it's true that Pinot Noir is not something you can decant, but at the same time, I'd like to make sure I let my guests to obviously choose what they're looking for. So therefore, I will carve it for them, and I will make sure that they enjoy those wines in the carafe, as they asked me to do. So a little bit of aeration. Obviously, there is no sediments, it's a young wine, so we don't need to do a decantation, we just have to do an aeration, as it's been asked. See, I can see clearly there is no sediment in the wine. So, <coughs> so beef tataki, is it something that we can pair with your wines? 
or then after, of course, we can do a beautiful steak tartare to continue, or even maybe an oeuf murette, if you were in Burgundy, is something I will enjoy nicely with it, just to pair nicely that vibrancy of the red and black fruit, the floral, that fresh rhubarb, a little bit of hint as well of raspberry. Thank you very much. May I remove the cork? Thank you, sir. Such a beautiful day, no, today? What do you think? Sunny, no rain, and we have beautiful people at the table in the restaurant, which is amazing. May I organize maybe something else after this pour for you? Maybe a bit more water? What do you think? Shall we do something for you? Excellent, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the wines. If you need my uh, help for later, I will be pleased to assist you to recommend maybe a nice red wine to continue our Pinot Noir, maybe a Cabernet, maybe a beautiful Nebbiolo, just to pair nicely as well with that bracket of Pinot Noir. But at the same time, what I love with Maison Champy is definitely much more a negotiation style, so a larger property, buying different grapes from different of the growers. So you still have the quality from a great premier cru. So that's even better for you. Thank you very much. I wish you a lovely afternoon with us. And we come back shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Loïc. Place a glass in front of you for the next task. Please make a full organoleptic tasting of the wine. You have three minutes. Please make a full organoleptic tasting of the wine. You have three minutes. We do. You start now. Thank you very much. We are in presence of a maybe of dry style of what wines with a beautiful golden color. Viscous with very, very slow tears. There is no sediment of gas. Bright. There's almost that cooked quince, uh, tangerine, uh, the touch of stone fruit, uh, mirabelle, a little bit of stone fruit, cooked apple, almost like that yellow apple. I have a little bit of spice, saffron spice, maybe hint of botrytis. There is no oak evidence, but we'll test on the palette later. I think this one has a beautiful synergy. Delicious. It has a little bit of sugar, just to balance out that beautiful singing acidity. The alcohol is moderate. The body is elevated. The finish is long, and the complexity is amazing. This one is a great pairing with such a beautiful dishes. But at the same time, first, the temperature. I will serve it a bit cooler. The glass is perfect. It just brings a little bit more aromatic and texture within the wines. I will keep it for the next still 10 years. It has a great potential. These wines, I believe, will be great with maybe a bit of foie gras and a beautiful chutney. Either if we do as well a main course, Maybe look at an aspect of chicken, some beautiful mushrooms that could be as well in the forest, just to pick up a lovely sweetness and richness and a lovely acidity as well that will marry nicely that. Or quince tarte tatin, caramelized quince, just to kind of highlight a lovely texture of the quince element in the wines, but at the same time bringing that lovely acidity that just carries through through the richness and the caramelization of that tartelette. It's going to be served with a lovely sorbet, Maybe uh, we can do maybe a little bit of caramel on the side as well, just to finish on top. I think it's going to be just a perfect match, and I hope you will enjoy it. So I think it's because, obviously, we don't have to talk about the vintage. We don't have to talk about the, uh, the style of the wines. I just think it's just a perfect wine to test now, to drink now, to leave it for the next 10 years in the cellar. The acidity just brings that freshness, that organization in the wine, that synergy is there for long aging in cellars. But at the same time, I like to do it by the glass. We do it by the glass. We use the Coravant to do it as well sometimes. But at the same time, it's the opportunity to serve it as well with different type of dishes. And I think those wines are perfectly there to do that. When I can say more, just a perfect wine.
time. Thank you very much. Four more glasses are coming. Okay, thank you. Can I what drink, drink sure. some water? It's very hot. Thank you. Ready to go? I am. Very good. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. You have four minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. Can, can Shall you I repeat? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Please identify these four beers and mention their method of production. You have four minutes. Thank you, sir. I'm starting now. Thank You're you. welcome. I think beer number four is a dark beer. Um, malted beer, perhaps double or triple uh, fermentation, so a quite a rich style of beer, perhaps from Belgium. I uh, believe it could be maybe a trappy style, or it could be maybe a more a girl style of beer. One is a fruit beer. I like them, maybe creek, raspberry, still in Belgium. I believe fruit beer. Um, so using fruit into barrel, so definitely I love the oakiness and oak spice in there. Uh, a little bit of maceration on the fruit. Um, I think it's a long big beer. Obviously goes. Oh, my apologies, fruit beer. On beer number two. A bit warmer, maybe a pale ale. Higher fermentation system, lovely texture and savoriness. Malted beer again from Belgium. Process, I'll go for a Trappist beer from Belgium. Uh, of course, non vintage, but could be Orval. Fruit beer creek on the one. I love the liveliness of that, uh, the freshness. Could be, we'll see, please now, but I, I will stick to pale ale style, um, and I will go to Argrave's Hill in Australia. Uh, Yarra Valley uh, from Lilydale, possibly. I think they're great beers. Could be an uh, amazing way of, you know, challenging our audience, guests, uh, maybe to a meal with those beers. Uh, but also enjoying them nicely after a walk would be very nice on the sofa, for sure. Um, and certain beers will go with maybe deeper and more flavorsome dishes. But some beers will be as well uh, with a fruit beer. For example, my wife will love that. Uh, so she will drink the whole bottle. So thank you. OK. You, you you have one, one minute more. Excuse me, sir? You have one, one minute. One more, more minute, so maybe I should drink the beer now, no? <laughs> I think one actually is not a fruit beer. It's definitely a girl style uh, or a Mars using either a first or second long big beer. So it's definitely long big on one, sorry. It's not a fruit beer. It does that, that kind of fruitiness, but actually the oak spice, the layer of the beer, is definitely something that I will uh, put in that situation there uh, on the, uh, the beer side there. The rest, I'm very confident. And all these beers, I will pair it with you know, a bit of cheese, raclette, for example, it could work very well with this. Um, some beer with chocolate, some beer with a little bit more, you know, lighter dishes as well. Um, there's a, a great range. Same. Yeah.
Okay. Very good. You already started to answer the next question. Am I, am yeah, I, you are so sorry. fast. I'm very sorry. Uh, you, are not, you don't have to be sorry. Please suggest a four-course meal to go with these four beers, and you have another four minutes. Thank you very much. Please suggest a four-course meal to go with the beers, and you have four minutes. And time starts now. First of all, do you have any preferences on your style of dishes? you like to go with your beer? Do you have any allergy, uh, allergy requirement I should be aware of first on the menu for you? No? Very good. Thank you. Excellent. So let's start. Let's start with uh, beer number two. I like to pair this with a kingfish uh, made with a beautiful dashi. That was just highlight really well that pale ale and with some little bit of uh, peanuts, roasted peanuts in there, just to highlight that lovely nuttiness and to capture that essence and that freshness of the kingfish and the acidity of the dashi. On the, on the three, I like to do a fish course. Uh, we'll do a tooth fish that has been uh, marinated in a, a sakelis that will just, obviously, for 48 hours, so we get a lovely savoriness. And we'll serve it as well with some caramel azenoki with a beautiful ponzu uh, sauce that will go really well with that uh, lovely essence of beer. On the beer number four, I like to do a wagyu, Kobe wagyu, just sealed on the hibachi. We serve it with a pica lily sauce, some pickles, just to highlight the lovely acidity and the power of that uh, beer. Four, Black Forest Gâteau. I'll go to Germany in Baden. I love that creaminess of that kirsch mousse, that feuillantine at the bottom, the cacao, and a little kirsch ice cream on the, on the side. Just to bring a bit more bitterness, the darkness of the beer, just to bring that lovely, lovely texture to it. I can see it. It's going to be great. Obviously, in my head, I always think that those match can be with anything. Even a beer number four can be cigars. Let's do a, a small cigar. El Rey de Mondo, small, tiny, just to smoke. 20 minutes, maximum, with that beer. The old fantastic beer, and I hope so you will enjoy my dish. Uh, if you have no dietary, of course, you know, we could do as well some amazing uh, Jerusalem artichoke, just braised with beer, too. For example, you know, Jerusalem artichoke, just braise them, cook them nicely out of the oven. You can smell already that lovely earthiness. Then let's do a little dashi just to kind of finish it with it and some white truffle from Alba because it's the season, so that will work really well with that. There's many ideas. Three, for example, you could go uh, sea urgent, caviar because of that esteriness and the, the, the touch more maritime influence of that beer. And even beer one, let's say, you know, you could go even a dessert there again. Playing with a beautiful tartelette with some rennes claude, a lovely uh, jus made with as well that caramelized sugar that will just give you that crunchiness. And the rennes claude I love because, you know, when they cook in the oven, they just have always that juiciness into it. So it works amazingly with that. And I think the beer has enough power and texture as well to work with that lovely beer. So there's many options. But those options obviously are for my guests. They are for my crown. But at the same time, I really, 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 really enjoy these beers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We continue. Let's do. On the screen is a short wine list in a moment of some iconic wines. But unfortunately, there are some errors that need correcting. Please identify and correct the errors and you will have two minutes' time for that. The list appears in a moment, don't worry. Um, after having had the two minutes, there will be a question which has to be answered immediately, so you only have a maximum of 30 seconds to answer these questions. You have been fast. Now or first? After, after. the two minutes. 30 seconds. repeat? Yes, please. On the screen is a short wine list of some iconic wines. But unfortunately, there are some errors that need correcting. Please identify and correct the errors. You will have two minutes. And afterwards, there is a question which has to be answered 
in 30 seconds. We'll do. And I hand you over the paper with all the information so you don't have to look at the screen. You can work from your place. We start. 2007, Claude Joliet. Claude Joliet has been released recently, not in 2007. Girons en Southwest. I think it was released in 2019, so I don't think so is right. Arbois Pupillan Sauvignon. No. Maison Pierre Auvenois Arbois Pupillan is not made with Sauvignon Blanc. First of all, the Sauvignon Blanc is not a great variety that is allowed in Jura for France. 1991, Bon Gani from Italy, Lazio, Semillon. Semillon, ooh. I don't think so Semillon is part of there, I was one. I think if you were in Lazio, uh, I would be using maybe Trebbiano or Greco. 2005, Jacques Truchot, Maurice Saint-Denis, Premier Cru, Clausal Solon in Burgundy, France. This, I think, is right. And the Clos Salon is not a premier cru, it's actually uh, uh, the, it's not a premier cru, it's actually uh, 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 a lieu-dit. René Angel of five, Grand Echezo, Grand Cru, Bourgogne, from France. 99, Henri Jaillet, Nuit Saint-Georges. I don't think so, Henri Jaillet had any Nuit Saint-Georges. Latour Aubryon, of six, from Pessac Léonien, Bordeaux, I think that is right. Chateau Madeleine is in Saint-Emilion, it's not in Margot. Jantas, Dervio, 89, Côte Rôti, amazing wines. Cuvée Réserve, Côte Blonde, I think uh, Jantas, Dervio was on Côte Brune, not in Côte Blonde. Cornas, Renard, 2000, Noël, Versé, I don't see any error there. My only concern is 2005, René Angel, Grand Echezo. René Angel started until 2002, and then after that, oh, actually it was nine, so all good. That does, there is no issue there. But I'm not sure if you had any Grand Echezo, so... I'm still questioning the Grand Echezo Grand Cru from René Angel. I know he has come Claude Bougeot. I know he has great parcel, but I'm not sure he's located in this region there. Uh, that will be pretty much over. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now the question. There is a special common denominator of these wines. What is it? Excuse me. There is a special common denominator of these wines. What is it? 30 seconds. They are all European wines. That would be maybe the link there. I think. I think they are all from Europe. That, that will explain. They are all from France. No, sorry, there's one from Italy, so. But definitely all European wines. And they're looking good, for sure. I will drink Chateau Madeleine. Time. No problem. Before you drink. We have four more glasses to come. I'm very thirsty, thank you. You're thirsty, that's good, you can take some water. Thank you. So, please identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. You have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, actually, yeah, why not? Please identify these four beverages and put them in the order from the driest to the sweetest. You have five minutes. Time is running now. Thank you. The one four. I will go for um, non vintage uh, Muscat of Setubal, fortified wines from Portugal. It was the two. Mm. 
That's some sugar, sweetness. We'll go with Cercial um, Madeira, uh, vintage 2005. The three, I think, was Rancio. We'll go with uh, Spain, Andalusia, Sherry Oloroso. And four, which in the order will be from the dryness to the sweetness. Uh, sorry, yeah. That was on the one. I'll go with um, 1987 Torabaya PX from Montilla Moriles. Uh, that would be my order. The dryest will be on my left. Then I will go on that order there. Obviously, I'm very sorry. I just confused myself with the numbers. Uh, and that is a big deal. Uh, so one was four, for sure. Uh, one will be my last one. Three will be my second. And number two will be my third one. Actually, it could be, sorry, I will change my, my uh, one four uh, for Semillon, late harvest from Australia, most food, uh, Semillon, late harvest, uh, picked as a boat right style level, but actually, let's do Semillon, most food, uh, 2017 vintage. What I love in four is definitely like high concentration of sugar. Um, definitely my sweetest, that was the one. They are starting fortified wines, but I think one number one that was on four, I don't feel so it's 45. Obviously the addition of alcohol just obviously changed a little bit more the structure, the sugar, um, definitely that warmth into it. They're all delicious for sure. Um, as I said at the beginning, I confused myself by removing them from the base, but I think I quite uh, defined uh, more that order from left to right in terms of sugar sweetness. So therefore, that Hi. would be my order. Thank you very much. Let's go over there. Please behind the bar. It's a bar task. With these bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, and Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktail. You do not need to make the cocktails. You have three minutes. 
Can you please repeat the question? If At I pleasure. May ask you, please. With these bottles, you can make four classic cocktails. Vesper, Manhattan, Sazerac, and Rusty Nail. Please organize the correct bottles to create the different cocktails in each of the trays. Write down and verbally state the name of the cocktails. You do not need to make the cocktails. You have three minutes. And yes. time is running now. So Vesper. So Vesper, classic uh, martini from Jess Bond, shaken usually using uh, more uh, gin. 45, we go 45 ml of gin, and this one we're going to use uh, London dry gin uh, from London. Uh, beef eater, great. Vodka, absolute vodka, it's delicious. We just do 20 ml, and then after finishing with Lille, which is an aromatized wine from Bordeaux, uh, shaken in martini glass, stirred down with a twist of lemon. So uh, gin, vodka, lily, uh, martini glass, and of course the decoration, the lemon just on top, just, just gives a certain twist of essence of that uh, zest as well. Um, we spoke about rusty nail, save it with a nice, um, beautiful, Kind of old-fashioned glass, obviously some ice in there, so we'll just maybe have a, a beautiful uh, ice in there. We're going to use uh, the base of uh, that will be 40 ml of uh, Scottish whiskey, and in that form we will use uh, Shivas, which is a blend uh, from uh, Scotland, and Bromby, which is a whiskey liqueur from as well uh, Scotland, and therefore here we're going to put just 20 ml of that amazing uh, liqueur. Serve nicely, obviously the weight and texture of the whiskey and that would just be amazing. Uh, Manhattan, rye, whiskey, classic martini, glass. So rye for Manhattan, and in this form we use a uh, wild turkey, which is a rye whiskey. And uh, let me just think a little bit clearly about this Kentucky, of course. Sweet vermouth, martini, rosso, and a little bit of, uh, sorry, Angostura bitter, sorry. Angostura bitter, bitter is a great bitter from Trinidad, and that will be just what we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to do 45 ml of that uh, turkey. We're going to do 20 ml of the uh, rosso, vermouth, and it's going to be a dash of Angostura. Stir down, serve nicely, shaker, and then after we finish with uh, Amana, Amarena cherries, just a classic from New York. And then with Sazerac, this is straight up. Again, using my beautiful glass, which is my old-fashioned glass. Once again, ice in there, stirred down. So I've got my beautiful mixer glass. Thank you. Uh, Chinese over. Come with me. Please, you have to look at the screen. On the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label but only a small part of it. Can you identify the producer and wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo. Thank you. I repeat. On the screen, you will be shown an iconic wine label, but only a small part of it. Can you identify the producer and wine? There will be 10 labels, and you will have 10 seconds for each photo, and the show can start. Beautiful stars, for sure. Uh, Flor de los Cieste from Argentina, possibly. Uh, yes, Concha y Toro, Alma Viva. Philippe de Rothschild and uh, Concha y Toro, so Alma Viva in Chile. Um, Roberto Buergio in Barolo. Uh, it could be, or it could 
to be Italian. He looks Italian. Uh, Rayas, uh, Chateau of du Pape, 2010, preserved. Opinion could be of Gonzalez. But I think he's definitely from that uh, Rayas company. And it could be, of course, different. Ooh, yes, uh, of course. Beautiful label. Late 1800s, Philoxera. Champagne. I think it could be. There is balance for sure here. Um, uh, I would call it. Um, well, no, sorry. Never seen that label before. Beautiful man. Ooh, Grace Vineyard, possibly, from Yamanashi. Uh, the Mas Misa Misawa Vineyard from Japan. Maseto. We are in, Bol uh, in uh, sorry, in uh, Super Toscan, Ornelaya, or Toyota del Ornelaya, Maceto, first produced in 1986, if I remember very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Louis, this was the first part. Thank you. We see you later on stage with your two colleagues for the last task.
So please can welcome back the three candidates, Mason, Andrea, and Loic. Please come on the stage. Be careful. Okay, one table for each of you. And the very final task of today. Please serve as efficiently and neatly as possible a magnum of sparkling sake for 18 guests. I repeat the question. Please serve as efficiently and neatly as possible a magnum of sparkling sake for 18 guests. Please start now. Thank you very much.
So thank you very much to the candidates and good news for the audience. You will now get served sparkling sake. Thanks to the candidates. Kampai. 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 Comment on les produits Now, you are probably curious what products have been served to you over the whole competition, and we have prepared a list of all the different products from the very first in the quarterfinal up to the last one in the glass. Now, you can enjoy the glass and you can have a look at the pictures. So, we can start. The quarterfinal task number one was wine identification. We had Grünewald Lina from the Terrassen. 2021 from Brundelmeier, a Tokai Ansu 5 Putonios from 2017 from Patricius in Hungary, and Edna Rosso 2020, Tenuda Ner uh, Terenere from Italy. Next, please. In the quarterfinal, we also had a special drink, which was the Rum Vieux Rum de la Martinique from 2011 Rum GM. In the quarterfinal, you served Champagne Bicar Salmon Reserve in 0.375 liter bottles from Champagne in France, so you all know it, you have done the task. Then, Cunevara 95 Block Parker Estate 2019 was 
the red wine in the semi-final for task number one for the full organoleptic description. Then you had three wonderful rosés. Landol Terre Brune 2021 from France, Vigna Tondogna, Gran Reserva 2012 from Rioja, and Pinot Grigio Ramato 2021 from Friuli from Atems. And you served Chateau Capé Gouillet Grand Cru Saint Emilion from 2018 for all the guests. The coffees! Robusta, the small and round one, Arabica, the middle size, and Liberica, the larger one. The first one, a dried, and the second and the third, a washed coffee. Coming to the next. The wedding task. It was wonderful to have this task, to get your imaginations about where to get married and what suggestions you had. So honestly, it were good suggestions. So it would have been fun to marry. And therefore, to all candidates, congratulations. And um, just consider a little bit more about environmental issues. Plastic is not always the option for environment. And perhaps also the limited energy resources and how you manage them. But it won't be the same task for the next competition, you can be sure. Please. In the finals, we had th four wines in the fridge. Encara de, Ile de Vercheles, Les Fichots et Les Vercheles. So we asked for each of you to serve a bottle of red wine for the first candidate, Ile de Vercheles, for the second, Les Fichots, and for the third one, Les Vercheles. And the white wine just was there for chance, so um, yeah, to help you a little bit in selection. And it was a task which went quite well, I think. Then we had a wonderful tasting. Honestly, um, it was amazing to see how many different wine styles can be in one single bottle from the Rhone Valley. So Chateau Neuf du Pape Blanc, Rayas 2005, uh, which was an excellent wine. And we promised you, you will have great wines during the tastings. And I think we kept our promise. Task number three for the finals. Beer identification. Gueux Lambic as the first one, a very classic Pilsen Ruckwell as the second one, an IPA, and a stout. Next. Here is the wonderful paper. We need the next one for the wine list, because then you see, next, then you see where we had the hidden traps. So, it's a Vin de France, the first one. The second one, not Sauvignon, but Savagna. Malvasia di Candia, not Semillon. Clos Orbe, for the Maurice Saint-Denis, Premier Cru. René Onchel produced his last vintage in 2004. There are Novo Carins. Um, final vintage of La Tour Aubriand was 2005. Chateau Magdalene was not in Margot. It's uh, Côte Brune and not Côte Blonde for the next one. And Verset did not make site-specific wines. So these were, next please, the very special things. And yeah, what have the wineries in common? Now, Commandaria St. John, Marsala, Moscatel de Cidubal, and Banyuls White these were the four wines um, we have presented to you. And um, yeah, I think it was very interesting to see um, what fortified wine styles can do. With great food and wine pairings, they made hungry. And the next task, Vesper, Gin, Vodka, and Lillet. The Manhattan, Rusty Nail, Sazerac. So you made your homeworks concerning the cocktails. And we can continue. Next, please. The photos. Astralis, Clarendon, Valle, Clarendon Hills from McLaren Vale, Shiraz. Next, please. Alma Viva, everybody found. Next, please. Capellano, but it's Barolo, at least. Next, please. Chateau Rayas, 2010 Reserve. 
Jamal Beck from Argentina, one of the very, very successful and famous labels there. Next. La Conseillante from Pomerol. Next. Ilancia La Colina Syrah, Hawks Bay from New Zealand. Yeah, it was balanced, you said. Yeah, it was balanced. Please, next. Scarecrow, Rutherford, Cabernet Sauvignon. Pietra Marina, Etno Bianco Superiore, 2013. It looks different than Mount Fuji, I have to say. Therefore, Yamanashi was not the right idea. But still, it looks volcanic. <laughs> it's volcanic with snow, please. And Maseto from Orelaya, an easy try. And the final, what we have in the glass, Nanducci Navasaki sparkling in the Magnum bottles. Cheers, and thank you very much for participating and um, for being successful tonight. Cheers. Kampai. So, um, have you now guessed what the three, uh, what the wines had in common? They don't exist anymore. That's it. All vineyards, yeah, all vineyards and estates which are no more actual. This was the common denominator. And they were all from Europe, okay, but this was not the specific and special thing we were looking for. Okay, now let's have party. Yeah, let's have party and um, I hand over to Shinya. Cheers. Kampai. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. The candidates, perhaps you guys can come here. Please stand before the table here. Okay. Don't jump. Right. Okay. I know the results already. I'm very satisfied. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, I want a big hand of applause for the two directors of the technical committee. Olivier Poussé and Sina Tazaki. Also, the rest of the jury also, Heidi, Serge, Marcus, Andreas, Pass, Dejan, the man behind the scene.
another applause for all of you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I will start to announce with the third finalist, then the first, and then the second. So I would like all of you to focus also and give all of them, each of them, the respect they deserve. Okay? Thank you. So number three, today after a fantastic final, Loic Avril. moment of suspense. I'm waiting for some music now. Music, please, maestro. And the winner of today's final, Best Summary of Asia and Oceania 2022, Mason. And a big hand of applause for number two, Andrea.
So the closing dinner will start at 7 o'clock, and the venue is next door.